Here we go, Dr. Tang, our topic for the end of the show is California racing coming to an end. If you're not following the latest drama happening, I'll pull up this LA Times story from about eh, 31 minutes ago. Uh, here we go, amid Santa Anita's threats to sell or close, CR CHRB approves Pleasanton race dates. If you're not familiar with what's going on, they're having the meeting, they had the meeting today for approving race dates. And with Golden Gate closing, all of the trainers and owners and, and connections up there said, well, we need to go somewhere. And so they thought, let's go to Pleasanton. Let's do more of the, the northern dirt horses, uh, dirt races like Pleasanton, Sacramento, Santa Rosa. Keep doing the fair circuit up there. Santa Anita's response, a, a company, you know, first racing that is supposed to be all about horse racing and promoting the best of it said, if you do that, we're just going to get rid of Santa Anita altogether. <laughs> um, oh, boy, don't you love it when everybody just plays nice, Mike? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, we've we've talked about what needs to happen here. It's never going to happen, but we need to privatize racing. And and you have these large corporations that have no control. That's a big problem here. They have zero control over what actually happens inside the sport. Um, they are forced to make business decisions at times. And this is Santa Anita has a problem, right? All of their their money, purse money, is generated by handle, right? So mm -hmm. when they're paying out purses, they need money bet in to be able to pay out the handle. One of the reasons they close Golden Gate, they want more horses because bigger pools mean or bigger races mean bigger purses. And they're at a purse, de purse detriment, meaning their their takeout doesn't cover their their uh, purses for the racetrack. And so mm -hmm. they were kind of put in a position where, look, we're losing money. At Golden Gate, I think it was like two point one million dollars. They lost at Golden Gate last year, just paying out purses versus the money bringing in for handle. You, you're losing money at Santa Anita purses versus handle. So if we take the Golden Gate horses and we get them at Santa Anita, maybe we can make that up and we're not operating two tracks, paying out two sets of purses, the whole thing. I get the thought behind it. I'm not sure those horses were ever coming to California or coming down to California, Southern California. That's the issue with it. What, out of the, let's say there's 100 horses on Golden Gate's grounds. There's a lot more. But out of the 100, what, 30% maybe come to, to Southern California? The other 70 go somewhere else. Like you're not getting mm -hmm. as big of a bump as like, hey, we're getting six more horses per field because that's how many were in Golden Gate. So uh, look, they should probably sell it. The question is, is someone going to buy it that like closing it doesn't make any sense. You're just going to close it down and not and just have it sit there when the land is worth, like Doc says, billions of dollars, literally. Uh, the question is, who buys it? Is it a developer that buys it? Is it someone who wants to keep racing horses there that buys it? Um, and, and you got to remember, Stronic doesn't own Delma. And that's the other issue with this is that like they don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't care if, if Delmar keeps going or not. They don't care the horse, the size of the fields in Delmar, how horses get there. Delmar needs Santa Anita to run because if it's just Delmar, it's awfully hard to convince people, hey, we're going to ship our horses in for a six week meet in Southern California. Now, maybe Delmar ends up getting more dates, but you got to remember that fairgrounds is also used a lot outside of just mm -hmm. horse racing. So it's not like you can just say we're going to go run Delmar seven months a year, eight months a year. That won't work. So it's, it's a really, really tough predicament here. Um, I don't know what the answer is. Like, you look at like the reason Oakland is, is thriving right now. They're taking their slot revenue, throwing it into purses, and getting big fields, and it's increasing handle for them. You look at most of the racetracks that are thriving right now, it's because they have slot incentivized purses. And that's mm -hmm. something you can't do in California. It makes the California landscape difficult. And then there was also a CAW article that came out um, I think it was on Blood Horse, if I remember correctly, where I was reading it. One elite player is making up over 10% of Delmar's total handle last year. One player. And so you have to cater to these CAWs. Yeah, it's mind-blowing, isn't it? Like, you have to cater to these CAWs to be able to then make sure that you're able to get them. But that makes a bad product for everybody else. And so it's just, it's a really, really tough scenario overall for these California racetracks and how they continue to operate. Wow, I didn't know about that last bit. Yeah, that's that's blowing my my mind. Yeah, it's just the the, the casino and gambling landscape in California. There's no sports betting. There probably won't be still for a long time. Um, the tribal uh, syndicates all I shouldn't call them syndicates. The tribes own the various tribes operate all of the casinos, and they have a staunch hold on that. And understandably so, they don't want to start sharing uh, any of that revenue. So. Uh, yeah, no, I did laugh really hard, David uh, Burris. <laughs> Chicago Bears are going to buy it. That's what's going to happen to Santa Anita. The Chicago Bears said, nah, we don't want Arlington after all. And it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, that made me so mad. Oh, oh well. you got to you got to privatize racing. 
Someone buy Stronic. Someone buy CDI. Someone buy Napoli's Rapoli's got the money. Have Rapoli do it. He we wants need, to make horse the- racing better. How do you do it? You buy up the entire product and run it how you want. 